every electric car does battery balancing. But what does that even mean? My name is Janosch, I've built three electric cars. And by the end of this short video, you will know what active balancing is, what passive balancing is, and the impact of one weak link in your battery pack. Let's get into it. Right, I've got four batteries here. And if I connected them all in series, that would be a 4S layout. Now, obviously in a real car, you're gonna have way more than that, right? You're gonna have 192 or 96. Now, if you're charging them, if you connect them in series, the same amount of charge goes into every cell. If you're discharging them, the same thing happens. And as we know, lithium batteries can only be charged as an absolute maximum to 4.2 volts and at an absolute minimum to like three volts, right? So, if you're charging them, charging them, charging them, up to 4.2, in reality you charge to 4.15 or 4.17 to leave some room for error. And the same at the bottom, you're discharging them, discharging them, discharging them, 3.0 volt is the end. Now, what happens if you've got unbalanced cells? Let's assume one of the cells here is not balancing properly, so it is sitting at a different level. If we're now charging up and up and up and up, three of these four cells were hit 4.2 volt and the other one will still be sitting there slightly lower than that, right? Uh, this gap there is loss of capacity that we can't, we can't access it, right? Because if we were to charge all the way to the top, well, the other ones would go over their safe parameter, right? So you can't charge that, far, that high. Now, discharging, even worse, we're going down, 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 and look here, the weak cell is hitting the lower threshold, so we have to stop, so we don't want to damage it, right? But all the other ones have these little gaps there at the bottom that we're not, we can't use them, right? So if we sum all of that up, that's the entire loss of capacity for one weak cell, one weak link in our chain, and all of a sudden we're losing a whole bunch of capacity in our arrangement here. Now there's two ways to get out of this situation. The first one is passive balancing. You take charge from the higher cells, you connect resistors to them, and you just bring them down to the same level as our weak cell here. And once they're all balanced in again, you can charge all the way to the top, or you can discharge all the way to the bottom. Active balancing is the slightly more intuitive version, where you then take the charge from the higher cells and put it into the weaker cell. You can do that with flying capacitors, like you connect a capacitor to the cells in parallel, take charge out of one, put it in the other one. In reality, here's a little secret, all electric cars that I know of or that I've taken apart are just using passive balancing. There's no need for the active thing. Why do the manufacturers do that? Because it's easier to build both in the software and in the hardware and circuit boards to do passive balancing than active balancing. So that's usually all they bother with. Now let's assume one of the cells has gone weaker than the others. So let's assume in our example in the animation, this one here is shown at half the width. So it's lost about half its capacity. If you charge it all the way to the top, you put the same amount of energy in all of them, but this one reaches the top way faster than the other ones, right? If you go down, you've got the same problem again, but the other way around, like this one reaches the bottom way faster than the other ones again. So essentially your whole battery pack is limited by the capacity of this one cell. So to recap, this is a 4S layout. In a car, you've got 192 or 96. You can charge them all the way up to 4.2 volts. Uh, you can charge them down to three volts. If the cells are unbalanced, you're losing capacity, like ghost capacity, you could call it, that you can't access anymore, even though it's still there. And that's a problem for both charging and discharging. Then there's two ways to mitigate this. There's passive balancing and active balancing. Active balancing is more intuitive because you're using charge to put it into another cell. Passive balancing is easier to build, it's cheaper to build. That's usually everything that's done in a car. If you've got a weak cell, you limit the capacity of the whole pack to the capacity of that one cell. And that's all there is to it. This is battery balancing in just a few minutes. I hope this video was helpful. See you in the next one. Oh, by the way, we're doing this in an animation only. I tried to do it with like pint glasses and me pouring water on top of it. It doesn't really work, so it's just going to be an animation for today.